Okay, if we could, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I uh, appreciate y'all coming out. I'm Steve Casey. I'm the Executive Director of the Florida Sheriff's Association. And on behalf of our President, Highlands County Sheriff Susan Benton, and our Task Force Chair, Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd, I'd like to welcome you to this uh, Task Force uh, Operation uh, News Conference. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, our host sheriff, Mike Agason, and uh, Sheriff uh, Ashley from Okaloosa County for being here with us, as well as the, the various agencies that are represented and their staff who've worked uh, so well on this operation. Operation Dry Springs was a five uh, week long campaign in conjunction with spring break for the majority of schools across the state. Our goal was to protect the well being of spring breakers in Florida by targeting youth in possession of alcohol, tobacco, or illegal drugs with an emphasis on synthetic narcotics. Operation Dry Spring also worked proactively to prevent the distribution of these substances by conducting undercover business checks of the sale of alcohol and tobacco to minors and the sale of synthetic drugs. From March 4th to April 8th, 2,634 arrests were made across uh, 35 different counties in the state. More than 18,000 grams of illegal drugs were seized and 3,400 business checks were conducted to ensure compliance with state laws relating to the sale of alcohol, tobacco, and synthetic drugs. These results were the direct correlation of the hard work and dedication of our sheriffs and their teams and uh, we are just very uh, honored to be able to work uh, closely uh, with the various sheriff's offices across the state uh, for the good of all. At this time, I would like to ask Walton County Sheriff Mike Atkinson if he would discuss how their office was able to produce such outstanding results as his sheriff's office was one of the top netting offices in the state. Sure. Thank you, Steve. Good morning and thank you for taking the time to come and, and be with us today. Um, Walton County has uh, uh, seen a tremendous change over the last few years, both in growth and potential growth for the future. And one of the things that we recognized is our top priority is to maintain the integrity and quality of life for the people in Walton County, but also for our visitors. Uh, quite frankly, the, one of the driving forces behind this task force is to protect the lives of our spring breakers, our visitors, the people that come forward. That's the most important thing we do. Uh, I will tell you as a sheriff, the toughest thing that you'll ever have to do, or as a law enforcement officer, is to knock on that door and say, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Johnson, your son or daughter is not coming home tonight because of an alcohol-related incident. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to save lives. And I think sometimes with our college students, they don't realize necessarily for our spring breakers the importance of what this means or the potential ramifications for their behavior. Uh, in Walton County this year, we made a very uh, uh, distinct decision to be proactive, to be aggressive in the enforcement of both the alcohol laws as well as all of the uh, uh, quality of life initiatives that are important to the people in the county as well. Uh, we've had a great community partnership here in Walton County. Our friends here at Seascape, uh, all up and down Scenic 98, they were engaged partners in trying to protect our community, but protect and pr promote the safety of our visitors. Walton County Sheriff's Office conducted over a thousand arrests in a five week period. And again, the reason for that is for the life safety of our visitors in our community. That's our driving force. 
we're going to tell you a little bit about the actual nuts and bolts of some of the things we saw here and how we uh, kind of learned to model our experience. Quite frankly, we've had some good examples close by Sheriff Frank McKeithen, uh, you know, over in Bay County, Sheriff Ashley over in Okaloosa, Okaloosa and uh, Sheriff Morgan and Sheriff Hall have all worked back and forth. That's one thing about the Sheriff's Task Force is there is a common goal involved here, and that's public safety. Uh, this is our second task force in the last year, but the one driving factor for all of this is protection of the citizens of the state of Florida. So this time I'd like to turn it over to Sheriff Ashley to tell you a little bit more about the operation in general, and then we'll talk about some of the specific nuts and bolts with Major A.J. Smith from the Walton County Sheriff's Office. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and giving us this opportunity to tell you about this operation. Uh, the, the driving factor, other than alcohol, underage drinking, and tobacco, was synthetic drugs. We saw a, a great influx last year. Um, our worry was that those kids from Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Louisiana, that may not yet have addressed or felt the effects of synthetic drugs, may feel like that it was open season in Florida to come. <clears throat> I'm happy to say we had not a single death related to alcohol, synthetic drugs. And that is the factor. Our economy in Northwest Florida are our beaches and the tourism industry. And if we can't protect our kids, uh, whether they're college kids or high school kids, when they come here, then they'll stop coming here because parents are not going to certainly fund a dangerous activity. Uh, we had a little over 300, almost 350 arrests in Okaloosa County. And uh, we had a pretty mild crowd. They were, they were moving a little over here towards Bay County and, and Walton County. But I can say again, Northwest Florida is, is proud of our beaches, proud of our communities, and uh, we want a family atmosphere where kids come and have fun and are safe. Uh, synthetic drugs are, are a bane. We've had over 66 undercover buys in Okaloosa County, uh, almost $3 million worth of product taken off their street. Uh, you know, I did a publicity stunt with uh, other sheriffs in Northwest Florida to destroy over a million dollars worth of paraphernalia. We crushed it, and it's to send a message that uh, you know, we won't tolerate that, selling that poison to our kids in, in Northwest Florida or Florida. The fact that somebody would market this stuff for our kids and call it Scooby Snacks or Fruit Snacks or the like, and then target our kids with the sale of these substances, you know, in, in 30, 35 dollars a gram, it'd take you a thousand dollars to take a bubble bath with those bath salts. It's crazy, it needs our attention. We've given it our attention, and I'm glad to say that uh, we don't have a single store uh, selling it in Oklahoma County right now. We've had uh, our Gold Star Award, which actually recognizes those uh, convenience stores that have made a pledge and a commitment not to allow these things on their shelves or to be selling them out of it. <clears throat> We've had almost a 90% compliance, and we're still doing those undercover buys, and we will do everything we can to put these folks out of business that sell this poison to our kids. And uh, look forward to talking to you more about this uh, as we move along. Thank you. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask uh, Major A.J. Smith to come forward. He's going to discuss some of the some of the specific stories and some of the things you may have heard about locally or possibly statewide about some of the way we took some enforcement action here in Walton County. Major Smith. Uh, good morning. Thanks for being here. And before I can even tell a story, I want to thank all the men and women of the Walton County Sheriff's Office for the amazing work they did because it wasn't us, it was them. They were out there every night. They were working hard, putting up with a, with a lot of stuff from spring breakers who don't like people with guns and badges messing with them. But we, I think we were successful for a lot of reasons. And one of them, we did, we had a zero tolerance. We're very serious about keeping alcohol away from underage people in Walton County. And I think that's the message that we put out early on. We wanted to make sure that the folks that lived here were able to go about their daily activities, sleep at night, park their cars in their driveways without being interrupted. And we did. We, we issued a lot of notice to appears. We also busted some open house parties. We took a lot of people to jail. We called the school bus down to haul them to the Funiac Springs. And I think that sent a message that we were not going to tolerate that kind of behavior in Walton County. We, the message we constantly put out was, if you're underage and you have alcohol, you're going to be arrested. And I think it went nationwide. We had kids come in from other parts of the state or other states and we're like, we've already heard about what's going on. We're going to behave ourselves. And a lot of times we would make a, write an NTA to someone and 
we wouldn't see him again. So we were hoping that the message did go out, and I think it did as a result of that, as a result of our zero tolerance approach to it. And I know nobody wants to see underage people locked up, but at some point, that's what had to happen, and that's what we did, and I think our message went, was loud and clear, and hopefully it'll be heard. The, uh, it'll resonate to next year, what we did this year. So that's, that's kind of it for the time being, unless you have any questions or anything. Real quickly, I'd like to also uh, point out that you know, Sheriff Ashley touched on the spice issue. That's something we'll continue to battle right on as long as well as with the underage drinking. Uh, please do not misunderstand, this is not a one-time thing. This is business as usual for the Walton County Sheriff's Office. And I think that I can safely speak for Sheriff McKeith and Sheriff Ashley, Sheriff Morgan in that regard. This is a way of life. Uh, at this time, I'd like to turn over to our partners to the east, uh, Major Tommy Ford with the Bay County Sheriff's Office, and they've really really led the way the last few years and provide an example for uh, the other Panhandle counties and we're, we're glad to have Major Ford with us this morning. Thank you, Sheriff. Good morning. On behalf of Sheriff McKeithen, I'd like to thank the Florida Sheriff's Association uh, for their willingness to step forward and coordinate uh, the effort to help us protect children. If you'll see the smiles out in the audience from the law enforcement here, that's because we, it appears that we may have survived another spring break. It was a, a very busy year, and I would be remiss in, uh, as far as the activities in Bay County if I didn't mention our partners with Panama City Beach Police Department, the Division of Alcoholic Beverages and Tobacco, as well as the Florida Highway Patrol for working with us as a team to help make spring break uh, a safer place for the kids that come here. We did see in several instances a criminal element that was also attracted to spring break, which requires us to really step up our game and be out there and focus on some of the general mayhem that's out there. But in total, I believe there was about 3,800 arrests um, in Panama City Beach by the combined agencies and about 1,500 for underage uh, possession of alcohol. So uh, without the partnership of the Sheriff's Association statewide and our brother and sister agencies uh, around us, as well as our local partners, it wouldn't be possible. And I think we can declare uh, at least some successes in spring break this year. Thank you. Thank you, Major Ford. Uh, Sheriffs, uh, Major uh, Smith, for uh, providing that insight into the operation. Um, once again, I'd like to thank you all for attending uh, this morning, and at this time, uh, we would try to answer any questions you might have. Question for Sheriff Atkinson. Yes, sir. Um, Mike, you have, I think, a little different situation in that you don't have quite as many of the big operations, you have monster houses right. versus the condos. How is that different in, in what you have to do? Well, I, I think there is a, a significant difference because of the, uh, the environment of Walton County in particular. One of the things that we saw is the advent of what we call monster houses. These would be houses where you would have upwards of 100 plus people spending $10,000 a week renting a home. Uh, you know, uh, we were we were pretty successful in, in taking steps to do something a little bit different, which is we would started you making it taking advantage of Florida's open house party laws. Uh, that's not something we've normally used here in the past. However, it's a very good tool. Most of your collegiate towns are familiar with it. We started doing forcible evictions. In other words, if you're coming in damaging home, we put you out. So you know, Major Smith led one at one time where 150 people were ejected from a home. Uh, that's a significant impact. That's a significant impact. So I think the forcible evictions, I think working with the property managers, the associations like Seascape here, uh, is, a, is really significant for us to be able to take advantage of a wide range of laws. Uh, it's, it is, becomes a little bit more difficult with some of the condos in, in our sister counties versus with us. We really have to take a, a uh, almost a civil side to it as well to deal with the evictions and those things because the neighbors are so closely together and one of the things we've consistently heard and we are aware of is the impact it has to the on the permanent residents that live in these communities this is not what they want and we have given our word that we will do everything in our, our power to make sure that their quality of life is not disturbed now was it a hundred percent was there no complaints were there no issues absolutely not but I think we got their attention uh, you know, and that's what we'll continue to. We're going to ramp it up again. So this is, as I said, this is not something we're going to stop. We'll continue moving forward. Reading the arrest report, they were from all over 
they were. I would assume that in the past they would tend to be, you know, a, a school represented, not right. everybody. Is that, is that due to cell phones and things of that nature? I will tell you, there, there's a significant impact involved with social media. One of the things we see is that you have different groups coming based on when their spring break is. And so we, we definitely notice that. I'll tell you, right after we started our initial uh, very active enforcement, we were getting calls from people at other universities saying, uh, you know, listen, we saw this on uh, Twitter, we saw this on YouTube, you know, we saw, uh, we heard the song on YouTube, Sprint Spring Break at the Walton County Jail. You know, that's the kind of thing that we want to get the message out to people. And it did, I think it did have a significant impact, to be honest with you. Next year will be a, a real telltale sign for us, because if they, if they come back with, listen, we want them to come here and enjoy themselves. But we wanted to treat it like it's our home and it's their home, and that's the only behavior we'll tolerate from them. Yes, sir. Um, I heard something a little different in the protecting part. We always get that from law enforcement, but the service part, and you mentioned economic, okay? The wallets and the parents won't pay for it. And so that's kind of a new thing. Are we going to look at, say, targeting with marketing like the TDC does or something like that? Um, are you going to just use the social media or are you just going to put out this presence? What's, what's the future look like? Well, I think it's a combination. I'll let the other uh, officers speak to their specific plans. One of the things we do, if there's a great idea, it's worth copying and stealing. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we see coming to our future is some of the parents are able to pay this fine and it may may or may not have a long-term effect. What we are suggesting here is to starting a sheriff's work program so that you come and give us some quality time back in Walton County on our schedule, not yours, and uh, you help beautify this county for the damage that you've done for it. That's the plan moving forward in the Walton County Sheriff's Office. And we've modeled some of that off of our sister counties and uh, uh, I suspect that if you come back to Walton County in the future, uh, you, you might see these really bright jumpsuits on the side of the road helping keep Walton County beautiful. But I would open that up to anybody else that might have a response. Again, our, our beaches are a major portion of our economy. And we want to make sure that there's, there are so many things to do when you come vacation in Northwest Florida whether it's parasailing or, or fishing or driving a boat or laying out on the beaches or whatever, what we don't want to be known as is a place where you come get crazy and out of control. We want to, our image is a family oriented place where you can come and have a great time, relax, go back to school, refresh, but you can't come here and get out of control, jumping from balcony to balcony, going to fights and that type of thing. So anything that puts you out of control, we're gonna do what our best to make sure you're, you don't have that available to you. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our partners to the West and the significant work they've done. I'd like to introduce Commander Shelby with the Scambia County Sheriff's Office to give you a little overview of some of the work they've been doing. By the way, the first county in the state of Florida. The first county. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of Sheriff David Morgan of Escambia County Sheriff's Office, um, I would also like to thank the Florida Sheriff's Association. Uh, this is the second project in the last 12 months that we worked along with the Florida Sheriff's Association, and we, we enjoy the partnership. Um, and again, like Sheriff Axon said, if it's a good idea uh, in law enforcement, we copy and steal it. Uh, that's just all part of it. But I, I would also be remiss if I didn't uh, I'd, uh, recognize Attorney General Pam Bondi and her office for the effort she's made uh, to help law enforcement combat illegal uh, uh, synthetic narcotics. And so I'd like to say thank you to her office. Uh, I know it's helped us. Uh, during the period of this operation, we were fortunate enough to seize nearly 20 pounds of spice. Um, and y'all all can know the figures of, of the prices by now. So we were very pleased with that. But on another note, we also were very, very, very pleased with our business owners on Pensacola Beach. The business owners that have the gas stations, the convenience stores, the liquor stores, the daytime bars, and their employees. We did two underage undercover operations on our beach and not one single store sold to the undercover officer. So, I mean, I think we, you know, that speaks volumes of the education uh, to the community and what they're doing to help us. So, thank you. Well, again, I thank you for being a part of this uh, press conference today, and we appreciate your support. Have a great day.
Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Same. Twenty years ago, I was a young couple with a family on operation. Thank you.